G'day everybody, welcome back to another video and today we're restoring the brake components on the 1981 Rover which I'm currently restoring. Now I know you guys have been waiting for a long time for episode 2 and I apologise that it's taking so long but it is in the works and when it's finished I'll leave the card up in the top corner and if you hang around to the end of the video I'll leave a little sneak peek as to what's coming. So without any further ado, let's get started on restoring the brake components for the Rover. So let's start this video with the brake shoe covers. These are disgusting and are covered in rust after years of sitting outside. So when we take them off, we can bring them into the shed where we can use a variety of methods to remove the rust. I'm using a wire brush and some WD-40 to clear off as it's only surface rust which comes off pretty easy. So once you've cleaned it all off with the wire brush and some WD-40, once you can rub a towel along the top of it and not get any residue on the towel, then um, you'll be all good to start painting. So for the paint, I'm gonna be using a metal paint, which is an epoxy enamel in the flat black color, but you can use whatever color you like. And if your rust was really, really bad, then you might consider using a primer first, just to fight that rust, but mine wasn't that bad, so I didn't bother using it. So just make sure you go around the entire surface of the brake shoe cover with two coats of metal paint, and that should help you fight any rust that you might encounter in the future. And have a look at how good these shoes look compared to the original rusty ones. Here's a before shot of them and now here's an after one. These look fantastic. And now that the brake shoe covers are done, we can move on to the wheel cylinders. Okay, so here are the wheel cylinders and brake drum parts. And as you can see, they look absolutely disgusting. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove these seals to get into the wheel cylinders, which I found extremely difficult, which I just did by prying them off. And make sure whenever you do this that you're careful of surroundings, otherwise you can do this. But at least we got the seal off. So with both outer seals of the wheel cylinder off, I went at one of the pistons with a end of a screwdriver which compressed the little spring inside then popped one of the little pistons out. With the piston out we can then remove this little spring on the inside and have a look at how disgusting that is in there. That is absolutely filth and no wonder it wasn't working. But the other piston was still in there so I got a dowel on the end of a hammer and just popped it out that way. The next step was to remove these little inner seals on the pistons so I just removed them with a little flathead screwdriver and once we popped them all off we can use some special EFX to transfer all the parts into this little container. I'm using some cleaning vinegar to fill up this little container full of the parts which just helps remove all the rust once you leave it in there for a night or two. So two days later we removed the lid and you can see how much dirtier the vinegar is. We remove one of the little brake pistons and you can see that it's covered in a little bit of a black filth here. So we give that a little bit of a brush off, a wipe down, and you can see how good it now looks. The wheel cylinder is next to come out, and you can see that it looks a little bit better, but it also looks like it still has a fair bit of its rust left. But once we go over that with the wire brush a few times and another wipe down, you can see that it looks just as good as those two brake pistons. So now we just do that for all the other brake parts, just give them a quick brush off and a wipe down, and then we're good to go. Have a look at how disgusting some of that residue is in there. So now it's time to replace the seals. So I've got this little seal kit from my local auto parts store and it includes two outer seals and two inner seals. We'll install these little inner seals on the brake pistons first and with a little bit of force you can hook them around and then just pop them straight on. After doing the exact same thing to the other piston, I then went to go put on the outer seal, but this one turned out to be a little bit harder than the other ones. So I've got some little bit of silicon grease on the edge where the surface meets the piston, and just worked that around there, and then it popped on a lot easier. So the next thing I did was insert the piston back into the cylinder, then just pop the seal around the edge. 
So I did the exact same thing for the other side, then installed the bleeder valve into one of them. And then just like that we have two completed brake cylinders and you can, you can see a before and after and I think they turned out marvellously. Okay, so now it is time for us to restore the front calipers here as before and after shot of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to first start off by removing the caliper from the car using the two bolts at the back. Then we're going to remove the brake line and we can bring it into the shed and start taking it apart. We can remove the split pins that you'll find at the top which will give us access to remove the brake pads. These brake pads definitely look good, they still have a ton of meat left on them, so I'm not going to replace them. So the next step was to remove the four bolts that hold the two halves of the caliper together. Now these were locked in there tight, so I had to clamp it in the vise and then use a breaker bar to break the bolts that way. And check out that play in that bench, it looks like it's going to snap and that's definitely going to be a fix in a future video, so subscribe and stick around for that. So with the bolts broken free now, we can now just use the ratchet to loosen them all up and take them out, and that will separate the two halves. So now it's time to do everyone's favourite part, which is the cleaning. Now, there was a lot of cleaning to do on this, and it's all stuff we've seen before. Just get the wire brush out and some WD-40, wipe it down, and these clouds were absolutely disgusting. As you can see, they're packed with dirt in some spots. I have to get a little flathead screwdriver in there to clean it all out. With the calipers all cleaned up, we can now move on to the painting, and I'm just using the exact same paint as I did when painting the brake shoe covers earlier in this video. And same method, just uh, brush it on with two coats and you should be right. After that paint had dried for 24 hours in between coats, I could then use some silver paint that I had lying around to go over the letters that were on the top of this and that just makes it stand out and look a lot better. So here is all the hardware that I had from the calipers, but we can remove the split pins because we won't be using them again. Then we can put all the parts into a container, fill it with vinegar and remove the rust. Now I returned a few days later to find that there was some kind of gunk floating on top of all the vinegar and after I removed all that just used a scraper to like, pick all that off and then just get rid of it. After I removed all that I could then clean the hardware. So now that all the parts are painted and cleaned, we can now begin putting the entire caliper back together. I use medium strength thread locker on all these bolts, which just makes sure that they never come out due to the vibrations of the car, because the last thing you want is your brake assembly to fall apart when you're driving. Then once they were all finger tight, I could just go around with the ratchet and tighten them all up. Now it's just time to put and store all the parts back into the caliper, including the brake pads, the anti-rattle clips, and the split pins. Now you always want to make sure that you use new split pins, even if you have to do what I did and go out and buy a huge set of 555 of them, just to use two of them. So that's it for this video, we restored the drum brake covers, wheel cylinders and even the front brake calipers. Now you'll see some more of this project in episode 2 of the free rover restoration which I know is taking a while to make but it will be out very shortly so stay tuned for that. In episode 2 we'll be taking a look at why the fuel isn't coming up for the tank, fluid changes, brake work and anything else that I need to do in this video. So subscribe and stay tuned because episode 2 is going to be bigger and better than episode 1 and if you guys haven't seen that video it will be in the outro of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for what's coming because it's going to be great. Catch you next time.